We're learning more today about the ousted president. Bashar al-Assad has reportedly arrived in Russia, did so with his family last night, and they have now been granted asylum. Crystal Gamansing is in London with more on the current whereabouts of uh, Bashar al-Assad and what we know about his fate. Good morning, Crystal. Good morning, Heather. Yeah, a seismic shift in Russia. We did see the Syrian rebel flag being raised at the, uh, the Syrian embassy in Moscow. That is pretty astounding considering the relationship between Russia and uh, the Assad regime. We know that there was longstanding support for the Assad regime throughout the civil war starting back in 2011. We have heard from the Kremlin spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov. He wouldn't answer questions when asked about when Bashar al-Assad and his family arrived in Moscow. He did say that the decision to grant Assad uh, asylum based on humanitarian causes did come from the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. There are questions about if the family is staying there, if the entire family is there, or if they'll move somewhere else. Worth noting that Asma, um, Assad's wife, is a British citizen. She was born and raised here in London. Uh, we have heard from UK government officials saying at this point they uh, have no indication that she'd be looking to come here. But of course, with a British passport, she wouldn't need to ask permission. She could just arrive. So that's one of those other sort of talking points that we're continuing to follow. At this point, it appears the family is in Russia. As Tom was mentioning, uh, Crystal, there is just so much uncertainty right now as far as the future of Syria, who will lead, basically what comes next in the country and in the region. What are we hearing from international leaders this morning about that? Well, we are hearing a lot from international leaders based on the history of Hayat Tahir al-Sham. That's the group also known as HTS. Uh, Germany's foreign minister saying this morning that uh, it will be judged by its actions. We know that it does have roots uh, based in al-Qaeda sort of uh, dialogue and history. They have been trying to move away from that very hardline position. Uh, we have also heard from Turkey's foreign minister saying that it will ensure the voluntary and safe return of Syrian refugees from Turkey to Syria if they choose to go. Also talking about the fact that Syria um, will have the support of Turkey during its rebuilding phase. Also hearing sort of similar comments about hope for the future, but, you know, uncertainty. Joe Biden yesterday saying it is a historic opportunity, but noting fears of that power vacuum. Keir Stalmer also talking, UK Prime Minister, about the potential moving forward. Take a listen to what he had to say about the future for Syria. It is a good thing that Assad is gone, a very good thing for the Syrian people. Um, what we must also ensure as we go through this, the rejection of terrorism and violence, uh, that civilians are protected, minorities are protected. That can only be through a political process. That's what we're talking to uh, allies in the region about at the moment. A lot of hope for the future. We heard a little bit of that hope being expressed yesterday from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He posted on social media a lengthy post. I'll read a bit of it saying that it's a new chapter, one free of terrorism and suffering for the Syrian people. Of course, we don't know exactly how things will play out over the coming days. It is hope that it will be a peaceful transition. As we've noted, a lot of celebrations in different cities in Syria. There will be a UN Security Council Council meeting a little later today where Syria and its future will be discussed. Russia called that emergency session, Heather. Crystal, thank you. We'll be watching that closely along with the other developments today. Thank you, Crystal Gomansing.